Now, Walla, long history of audio monitoring and metering for broadcast applications. Mm. And now, John, these days we're faced with standards like ITU 1770, EBU R128. Mm. How do we monitor these things? Well, uh, you go for a device which, instead of telling you what the peak level of a signal is, and that's what we've been used to monitoring, peak now meters and so on. peak meters and, yeah. and even VU meters, which sort of give a rough average level, something roughly approaching loudness, uh, we now go for a device like the Pandora, which tells you something about loudness as an agreed standard. Yeah. In this case, in, in the units LUFS or LKFS, uh, the, the agreed standards globally that are now being used to determine how loud is something. Mm. And of course within that you can obviously adjust your reference levels to depend on you know, what your specific facility or application requires as you know the standard to which you need to conform. And, and FS in this case full scale for loudness is not the same as like DBFS which is where you're running out of bits or you're running out of room on an amplifier. This is relative to whatever you think maximum loudness could be, which could be loudness on a gig. It could be related to live sound, not just an electrical measurement. It could. Look, I think, to be honest, this is going to find its feet more in things like control rooms and post facilities. Mm. But look, it's a really cute little device. Basically, this is, this is an iPod Touch, mm. which is running the software. It slides into this gizmo here. On the back, we've got BNC terminals, there's an SDI input and there's four AES inputs plus a power supply input. Uh, there's a little mounting bracket so you can mount it up with no problems. So and that means it's going to be able to take the typical signals that you would have. So AES, a single input, is two channels. You can have up to four of those, so that's eight channels. You can feed in multi-channel Dolby, so 5.1, 7.1, and, yep. and read that directly. And you can take the audio directly from an embedded video feed. So you just feed the video straight into this. It strips off the audios and displays those. And you know, the beautiful thing about doing it in a digital format is that whereas with analog, you've got calibration stuff you've got to worry about. Always got calibration You problems. don't have that no. in the digital signal. No. Now, the, the app is really interesting, and you can go and download this directly from Wallet on the App Store. So here it is running on an iPad. You can bring it up to double speed, which is really cute with the iPad. And double in fact, size. Double size. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in fact, with the extension cable, you can separate the display device from the electronics. So you could run this externally if you wanted it like you a, could a seriously run it on the big iPad and have a, a seriously display. big display. And then on here it's the usual touch things so you can switch between say this which is this is demo mode, this is the multi-channel display, this is the cumulative timeline display or just numbers. And the number is actually becoming more popular as, mm. as a thing for people to look at and go Yes, I'm on the numbers, I'm on the money, or I'm too high, I'm too low. Yeah. You can set up warnings as well. So obviously you see this is bright red at the moment. That's because uh, it's way over. It's regard as high. And, and working by the numbers might seem really bizarre if you're used to looking at meters. The thing is that meters are pretty much instantaneous devices, whereas what people react to in auditory terms is over a period. It's so, time logged. So the number uh, which is generated over a period, and you can set what period that is, the number tells you something about how loud the sound will be perceived over an interval. Exactly. It's very easy to go through and reconfigure. You just swipe down, it gives you a menu here which gives you uh, the options that you might want to set. So you can say uh, is the alarm going to be when the signal goes over or under or, or both uh, for our reference? Uh, are you dealing with stereo or multi-channel sound? Is, is the input coming from the SDI or the AES inputs? And you can set your reference and with this you can say, well, what is the point at which I want the, the numbers to be turning red? Do I want to be working in the American units, LKFS, or the European units, LUFS? I mean, they're essentially the same thing. But mm. this device, Walla have, have nicely given you the option to set whichever you're most comfortable with or whichever your client is most comfortable with so you can display that. Indeed. Now, John, you've got your pad running in demo mode there. I've got the actual Pandora plugged into an actual real audio signal and uh, it's telling me that at the moment I'm sitting at minus, minus 24, minus 20 to minus 6 LUFS. Mm. So, um, as you say, I can go through, I can see the historical thing. This is actually just playing back a song on repeat out of my computer. But um, yeah, it, it, it's doing exactly what it needs to. 
Look, I, I think that there's a lot going for this, and, and for the money, it's um, it's certainly a good option if mm. you if you need to to get get some monitoring to tell you if you're compliant or not. How you get to being compliant? That's entirely that's a different another, story oh. for a different day. But um, if you want to know where you are as far as compliance goes, this is certainly going to tell you, and it's. Uh, it's very easy to set up and get going. And it's going to be cost effective enough that you can have a number of these in the facility uh, and indeed move the active device from one to another. So you, you've got all the redundancy you could possibly ever want. Indeed.